everyone good afternoon <clears throat> I see there's already a question here about online yoga and I just decided to go live today because I actually have an announcement about my um, class schedule so I am going live today um, just out of the blue <laughs> I just suddenly thought of going live so that I can um, update you about my upcoming online classes, um, events, and <laughs> hi Zane, <laughs> one of our sweet souls. Um, so before we start, I would like to ask, um, where are you guys from? I see there's someone here from Iloilo City and from Dubai. Hmm. I am currently drinking peppermint tea. Someone's asking. Naga Kamsur. Wow, Kuwait. Mm, hello, Jensan. Mm. Sydney, Australia. Lower Antipolo. Yeah. <laughs> I also stayed in Antipolo for many, many years. Higher Antipolo, though, because I was up in the mountains near the Bayan. So we have someone from Bohol. Ilocos Norte Pagudpud, New Zealand, wow, Leyte, ha, <laughs> nice, nice, Cebu, Tarlac, mm, thank you, <clears throat> Las Vegas, wow, okay, so everyone, Hong Kong, oh, perfect, um, I actually went live just now because I want to promote my vlog which we uploaded yesterday, and I hope that you guys watch it. It's my Hong Kong vlog. And um, in this episode, it's about mental health. And um, we talked to some of our OFW Kababayans that we bumped into in Hong Kong. And we asked them how they're dealing with their mental health. Because mental health really is a very um, sensitive topic, you know. Not a lot of people are ready or are open to talking about these um, topics but in our vlog uh, we like to talk about these things but in a more relatable and in a more positive manner because we really have to talk about these topics if not now when right so please please watch our latest vlog episode 4 part 2 which is in which we shot in Hong Kong um, this vlog is directed by one of the coolest guys in Manila, Jeff Gonzalez. And uh, his Instagram handle is Out of Scratch. So if you would like to check him out, he's also one of the best DJs in Manila. And um, <clears throat> yay, thank you. So please watch our vlog. Uh, we really put our hearts and souls into it. Um, all of our episodes actually. But we're very excited about this one because it's the start of the year and uh, we're very happy to share good energy with you as we begin 2024. Uh, yes, so um, there, please visit uh, the link in my bio if you would like to watch our vlog. Yay! Raw and Spiritual Living said uh, they watched the vlog already. And it's so amazing and full of love. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad that you liked it. I hope to see you in Hong Kong when I go there. And what are my future vlogs? I have one coming up which I shot in El Nido. So please watch out for that. That episode is about healing. So our episode in Hong Kong is about um, mental health. 
And then our El Nido episode is about uh, healing. Wow, Acebella says the vlog hits so different. I love it so much. Thank you. Oh, we appreciate that. You know, the vlogs that we create, we see it as art. Our, our art, you know, it's coming from our hearts. And it's our, works of, it's our work of art. Because we really did put a lot of thought into it. Our soul, we poured into it. So we really hope that you enjoy it. Our intention is just to share good and healing energy. Especially for my followers who have been asking a lot about mental health. This episode is for you. So, um, please watch the vlog. The link is in my bio. 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 Um, the, it's on my YouTube channel, Maxine from Manila. Wow. It's Queenie said, your vlogs are so good. Please make some more. Wow. Thank you, Jeff, my creative director. <laughs> He's the one who edits, shoots and edits. Amazing. Okay, so other besides the vlog, um, wow, okay, I am Harvin is saying, please start a podcast. I could listen to you all day. My podcast is also in the works. I'm still working on it. Um, I work from the soul, so I don't rush anything. I feel my way through my work. So I hope that you can stand by and stay tuned for that. Um, mm, yay. <laughs> Thank you. So while we're here, do you have any questions about mental health that um, maybe I can answer while, while I'm doing this live? Because our, because our um, episode, our latest vlog is about mental health. So if you have um, any questions about mental health right now, You can just type them in the comments below. And if I see it, I, I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. Mm. <laughs> so someone's asking, <clears throat> medicine or psychotherapy? Um, I've been seeing my psychiatrist since, I think, 2019. And I have, I'm ha very, very happy and grateful to share that I have never had to have, I have never had to use any kinds of medications. I've only been using the natural way of um, healing, which is therapy, yoga, meditation, journaling, you know, releasing my emotions every day, regularly. And this is what really helps my mental health. So someone is asking how to deal with anxiety, especially when it triggers. You really have to first acknowledge and feel. Feel all your emotions. When anxiety manifests in the body, when we start feeling anxious, we tend to panic because it's an uncomfortable feeling. But we have to understand that all of us, we need some, some amount, a little, amount of anxiety. It will not be completely gone. It can never be. Humans are wired that way. You know, we get anxious and that anxiety is actually good for us. But when we don't feel it and we don't honor what we're feeling, then that's when it becomes problematic. That's when the anxiety builds up. So we have to acknowledge and sit with those feelings, uncomfortable feelings. So when you're feeling anxious and when you're getting triggered, it's important to just first be aware. Awareness is key. And if you do this practice regularly, which is why meditation and any kind of self-work practice that can bring you closer to yourself, that can make you feel more of yourself, this is what you need to do to be able to deal and to deal with your emotions the healthy way. And the reason why we get anxious, the reason why we get depressed, the reason why our emotions get the best of us is because we don't release them, we don't express them in a healthy way. So we need to learn how to do this. And if you can't, if you don't know 
what practice works for you. You're always online, so please do your research. Research any kind of practices that can help lessen and reduce your anxiety. So many, many practices, so many books that you can read, so many audio books for free even. So there are a lot of ways that you can help yourself. And again, I can't do this for you. Only you can do it, do this for you. Okay? So, uh, hmm. Okay, so let's try to answer more questions. What is backward healing? I'm so sorry, but I, this is the first time I'm hearing about backward healing. So I thank you for sharing. I'll do some research on that. But um, I really don't know. I don't answer questions that I don't know the answer to. I don't pretend <laughs> to know. Um, but if I do find out, um, maybe I can answer it in my next live. Ah, how do you stay patient with yourself when you are in the hype of your emotion? Like you are really enraged. Jin the kitty is asking. Wow, I've been there. Um, rage is such a powerful emotion and it, it really will overpower you. So the best thing that you can do is to breathe. Breathe deeply. Connect to your breath and listen to the sound of your breath. It will pass. Don't let it build up by adding more negative energy, by panicking, by exploding. Be aware, notice, and then breathe. Focus on your breath. Count. Make 10 deep breaths. Sit. Set your phone, the timer, 10 minutes, deep breathing. And this can really help you, especially where, when you're in the middle of it. Breathe. Get away from the people around you. Lock yourself in a room or go out and run in an open field and scream there. Just find a way to come back to yourself. Gather yourself and calm yourself down. You can do this through the breath. Focus. You're very, very strong and you can be stronger than your emotions. But again, this is a practice. So if we don't want to get to that point of rage, then we need to have a daily practice where we process our emotions so that they don't build up and so that we won't one day explode. That is what we are trying to avoid. So please release and express your emotions regularly in a healthy way every day. Miss Maxine, how to cope with the loss of someone? Just that amazing. I am the perfect person to ask this because I already lost my father and I have already lost a lot of um, people in my life. Um, I've already cut a lot of ties with a lot of people in my life. And letting go, losing loved ones, this is a natural part of life. So first, we have to accept that. The reason why we suffer is because we don't want to let go. So we have to learn to first accept that losing loved ones through death or by cutting ties or by ending toxic relationships, this is a natural part of life. So we have to practice a certain level of detachment. We cannot hold on to things that poison us, like toxic relationships, one-sided relationships relationships that don't really see us value us appreciate us a loved one that we have lost for many many years but we still don't want to let go this is unhealthy for you so please learn how to let go for your own sake trust that everything is happening for a reason and that everything is in perfect order this is happening because you need to learn something from it. So let the person go and only take with you the lessons that you learned through that pain. That is going to make you stronger. So this is how you learn how to cope with losing someone. 
is by accepting. I know it's easier said than done. I know it's hard. But this is one of the biggest challenges of life. And Michael A. Singer, one of my favorite authors, said, the bigger the pain, if you let it go, the bigger the reward. So when we lose something in this lifetime, we have to learn how to let go with grace and with love. Not with anger, not with hate. Learn to let go peacefully. To understand that nothing here is permanent. We will eventually lose our loved ones, one way or another. Death is inevitable. So please train yourself as early as now to learn how to let go. Letting go is a practice that we must learn. And I promise you, it's going to be one of the best skills, one of the most important skills that you will learn for yourself. How to let go like that. And it's going to be a process. It's not just like that, but it's easier than how it was before because you're practicing it. So letting go with grace, with acceptance. Pray to God. Pray to God to help you through this process. Because letting go is not denying. Letting go is actually accepting that the person is gone, that the person is already away from you. That's the first step. Accept that. And then you let it go. So letting go is not denying. Letting go is not just forgetting or sweeping it under the rug. Letting go is acknowledging, accepting, and then letting go, surrendering, which is actually one of the strongest things that you can do. I wish you the best. You can do this. If I can do it, you can do How do I confront my emotions, shadow work? Catherine Valdez Poe. So many ways that you can do shadow work. So shadow work is the work of bringing up our shadows. Our shadows are the dark parts of us. The parts of us that we have rejected, that we have hidden in our subconscious. So these are our shadows, our toxic traits, our, mm, the things about us that we have not accepted. Sit with it. Sit with yourself every day. Notice your toxic traits. Then you can confront them. Healing takes honesty. You have to be honest with yourself. Even if it makes you cringe. Seeing yourself, seeing the ugly side of you, that requires a lot of humility and honesty. Healing is very humbling. You will see the parts of you, your shadows, that you don't like, that make you feel uncomfortable. And this is why people drink their sorrows away. This is why people do drugs. This is why people cheat and have multiple sexual partners. It's because they don't want to face what they need to face inside of them. So they use different kinds of distractions because it's hard. It's very hard. But this is how you're, you're supposed to do it. You have to face it. So sit with it. Sit with it. Let them come up. Cry if you need to. Apologize to yourself. Write yourself a letter. Journal. Write about it and then let it all go. And then if you need to do therapy, research, um, read some books. But I would say the best way to deal with your shadows is to face them head on. Don't run away. The more you run away, magugulat ka na lang, it's been years and you haven't really done the work. So sayang yung oras. So please start as soon as you can to work on your shadows to work on your inner demons. Yan ang tinatawag natin na inner demons. Don't be afraid. And again, only you can do this for yourself. Your psychiatrist can help you. You can do therapy. But at the end of the day, feeling your emotions, the awkward feeling, the shame, the guilt, the pain, only you can do that for you. Mackenzie Humphrey is asking, I am diagnosed with anxiety or depression. May gamot po ako. Gusto ko sana hindi iinom ng gamot. How to control? I really believe natural healing is possible for everyone. But I also understand that some patients need medications. I am not disrespecting or saying that it's wrong. I respect everyone's journey. I respect people who take the time and to invest and who invest in their healing, actually. 
more than the people who just drink or just do drugs or just party, whatever. Instead of dealing with their healing, they do that. Even if you're taking medications, I salute you. I respect you because you're doing the work. But if you would like to take the meds off, to take to remove the medications, I would say ask first your therapist to help you how to remove these medicines slowly. I don't think you can do it as, um, abruptly, especially if you've been dependent on them for a while. So please ask your therapist for help. Tell them that you would like to do your healing without medications. And I promise you, they will have some answers for you on what you're supposed to do. For me personally, I like to have a non-negotiable morning routine, which has helped me stay centered and which has helped me regulate. Excuse me. Regulate my nervous system every day. So that has been helping me stay centered, balanced, present. And it keeps, this, this morning routine of mine is my medicine. I meditate, I practice yoga, I go for a, um, I brisk walk. Um, I also get some sun in the morning around 8. Uh, seven to eight. Um, these are all natural forms of medicine which can really help you. So please ask for help and do your research. What works for me may not work for you. We are all different in um, with how these practices um, affect us. So please make sure to not do anything without consulting your therapist, especially if you've been taking medication. Yes, I believe fasting is a very good way of dieting. It's a good way to make your body um, take a break from all the food, especially if you love junk food. Fasting is a very good cleanse. Hmm. I am Harvin. Any book recommendations? So many. So many. Michael A. Singer, an unte The Untethered Soul, and Living Untethered. Um, the Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. Power of Now and A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Oh my goodness, that one's gold. Please, undamning books that you can read. Self-help books. Go crazy. Of course, Polly Ann Bagolvero is asking, is, can crying help with your anxiety? Yes, yes. Crying is a very good release. When you're feeling anxious, scared, depressed, crying, let it go. If you don't cry, you're denying yourself of your emotion. Crying means you're acknowledging your pain. So this is very healthy. Don't be afraid. But also don't overdo it. Cry and release it and then let it go. And when you're happy, you laugh. And when you're sad, you cry. But in society today, we just want to keep laughing. And we just want to keep feeling good. But we also have to learn how to acknowledge and how to feel the not-so-good emotions. So that is what you need to do. You need to feel all your emotions. Relapse is part of healing. Relapsing is very normal. We're not perfect, you know, we're only humans. So we healing, it especially natural healing, you will fall back to your old ways. I've been there. Oh my gosh. <sighs> old Max keeps trying to resurface once in a while. And it's normal. This is old energy that is resurfacing. So we just need to be patient. Don't be discouraged. You will fall back to your old ways. But again, it's your job to pick yourself back up and to not give up and to keep going. Even if the old you tries to sneak back in once in a while, the higher you, 
your best version will have to be stronger than the old you. So this is a practice every day. Every day. Is jealousy normal? Yes. Yes. Because we get insecure and we're only human. So jealousy is a very normal emotion. And it's also a healthy one because it means if you're jealous, it means you like the person, you love the person. But it doesn't mean that you have to let your jealousy take the, get the best of you. No, acknowledge it and then do something so that you can feel good about yourself and you won't have to feel jealous. So work on yourself. Work on building up your self-esteem. Find things about yourself that you love, that you're grateful for, so that you won't have to be jealous. How to know yourself? Joy Joy B is asking. Ah, meditation, I would say, is the best way to really know yourself. We know ourselves by our name, by our age, our gender, our race, our job. But to truly know yourself is to touch your soul, to feel your heart, to feel your emotions, to understand how you work how you operate inside that is who you really are not your name not your job not the followers you have on instagram no nope. it's here to know yourself is to be one with yourself meaning to be connected to your inner world more than the outer world in society today we are more connected to our to the out to the outer world because we think that's what we're supposed to be doing but what we're supposed to be really doing is staying here inside while we operate in the outside world. Stay present with yourself. Stay connected to yourself. And this is how you're gonna get to know yourself every day. Because you will see for yourself your triggers, your emotions, what you like, what you don't like. Knowing yourself is really understanding yourself. So study yourself every day through meditation. This is how you will know who you really are. <clears throat> how to be calm if you are surrounded with toxic people? Tessai is asking. Again, meditation. Excuse me. You have to learn how to regulate your nervous system so that if you are staying in a house with toxic relatives, you learn how to regulate yourself so that you won't get triggered as much. But if it's getting too much, I would suggest finding your own place, if you can. But if you do not have the means, then please be patient. God will find a way for you. Control your triggers. You are there for a reason. There is something there that you need to learn, that you need to work on. So if you are getting triggered by the people around you, ask God to help you. Meditate every day. Calm yourself every day so that you won't be triggered as much. But find a way. Find a way out for you. If you really can't deal with it, manifest your own place and work towards that. You can do this. But you have to do the work every day and you have to have faith and trust God. Hi, Chriselle. Mm, one of my sweet students. One of our sweet souls, Chriselle. <laughs> Someone is saying, Inahas mo si Angel Luxin. <laughs> there was a rumor before that I got pregnant. Um, connected to Angel and Neil. Neil is my ex-boyfriend, but it's not true. 
I wonder where the baby is. <laughs> is this the baby? <laughs> it's not true. Um, don't listen to gossip. Don't listen to rumors. I, I choose God over gossip. So it's not true. I love Angel. Angel is one of my dear friends in show business. And I have no beef against my ex-boyfriend. Any of them, actually. <laughs> so it's not true. Wala po akong inaahas. <laughs> and um, I highly recommend that you turn to God more than, more than listening to gossip. Greta A. Ramos, Hi, I am a mom of two, a special child and infant. How can I be calm amidst the chaos I face each day? As a full-time mom, I am eager for self-care and self-awareness. I feel like I am not present at times. First of all, I would like to congratulate you. Um, this is not a, an easy role, an easy task. I salute you. This is not an easy road. This is not an easy journey. Motherhood is hard enough as it is and to have a special child i can only imagine <clears throat> how much harder but first please understand your special child is a special gift they are there because they are there to love you purely and they are there because they chose you as their parent so they are a gift and if you would like to know how to be a present mom Please set some time for yourself every day before you take care of your kids. Wake up as early as you can. Yes, I know there's an infant. Even with the infant, meditate. Sit in a quiet corner and meditate. That would be great even with the baby in your arms because then you would be sharing good energy with the baby. So please learn to meditate even for just 5 to 10 minutes. This will bring you peace and this will set the tone for your every day. And then, the, then I promise you, you will have an easier time. Try. Try. Meditate and pray every morning. Do this as a sacred ritual. As a promise to God. Connect to God every morning. Charge. You know, meditating is charging with God's love. Every morning. Connecting to God first and foremost before you start your day. Asking Him for guidance and help. Lord, I am about to face another chaotic day. Please be with me. Send the Holy Spirit to me. Every day you do this. And I promise you, you will have an easier time. Wow, JPPG07 is asking, I know that this is very broad, but how do you define self-love? Mm. Self-love for me is acceptance. Complete acceptance of yourself. Meaning everything about yourself. Both the good and the bad. This is real self-love. Love is easy to give in good times, you know. But when times are not so good, when there, are, when there is pain, it's not that easy to love, right? So when there is something about us that we don't like, but we still offer ourselves compassion, forgiveness, and acceptance, that's love. That's true self-love. And true self-love is doing what is right for you and not betraying yourself any longer. True self-love is being true to who you are and not having to change yourself to be approved of by others. Self-love is not people pleasing. Self-love is pleasing yourself, doing what is the best for you. That for me is self.
How come you are not in family pictures with Sab? Um, families sometimes take a break from each other, you know? Especially when the frequency, the, the energy is not a match. Uh, we sometimes take a break and there's nothing wrong with that. This is a healthy break, actually. And who knows, maybe some time in the future, um, we will reconnect again. But for now, a healthy break is okay. Keeping a healthy distance, even from your loved ones, it's very healthy and normal. So there's nothing wrong with that. Social media makes us believe that everything has to be perfect. Or pag wala si ganito sa picture, hala, may problema. We we shouldn't judge based on what we see on social media because we never really know what's happening, right? Especially with celebrity families. We are just like you, but we are just in the public eye. So we just, just like you, we also go through our own family problems. And there is also always a healthy way of handling this. So I suggest that you give people grace by not judging and by not thinking or assuming anything. Thank you for asking, but I would really like to keep the, my personal matters as private as possible. And you wouldn't like it either if someone is asking you such personal questions, right? So please give celebrity families or give celebrities grace by not judging them based on what you see only on social media. Celebrities share with you their lives um, online, and I think that's a beautiful thing. So let's be grateful for that. Instead of thinking of the negative or pointing out the negative, let's give each other grace. Understanding. You like to see, I think this is sad cows. Uh, so that's the, <laughs> that's our toy here to remind us that it's okay to be sad sometimes. I hope this won't bother you, but I really see Master Francis M in you, in your face. I, that doesn't bother me at all. I'm already used to it. I really do look like him. <laughs> so it's okay. I love my dad, so. Hi, Tita Chicky. I hope you're still here. <laughs> nice to see you here. <laughs> Wow! Besides meditation, what is your secret to being a radiance of sunshine? <laughs> God's love. Because God's love shines through me. Because I love you as much as God loves you. Meaning, I don't judge you. I don't judge others. I try. I really try. Sometimes it's hard. But I try my best to be accepting of everyone. Not to say that I'm gonna allow everyone to just do whatever they want to me, but if someone is being toxic, I will just love them from afar. And that's how I am. Uh, I let God's love shine through me because I want to be an example of God's love here on earth. Not to say that I'm perfect. No. Contrary to that, I, I am, I'm just real. I'm authentic. Uh, meaning, I understand I'm not perfect. Um, I have my flaws. But that's why I am forgiving and accepting of others. Because I understand that I myself am not perfect. Why will I expect others to be perfect? Why will I judge them when they're doing something wrong? When I myself make mistakes, right? So I think that's why I am radiating with sunshine. <laughs> because I, I love like God loves. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi Max, where did you get all your wisdom from all that pain? <laughs> from all the pain that I've been through, from all the pain that I've faced. Pain makes you stronger, pain makes you powerful. One of the things that Paramahan sa Yogananda, one of my favorite yogis, his book Autobiography of a Yogi is what actually got me into yoga teacher training. And he said, I think it was him who said it, correct me if I'm wrong, but a memory without an emotional charge becomes wisdom. A memory without the emotional charge becomes wisdom. So pain, a painful situation that you have gone through, once the pain has left and you have understood the lesson, that's when it becomes wisdom. So many questions that I would like to answer, but uh, I don't know how to make a broadcast channel. I I don't. Can someone help me? I'm a creator content. I'm a creator account, but I don't know how to make a broadcast channel. Please, please help me. Anyone who can help me. I need help. I don't know how to create a broadcast channel, but I would love to, please. Um, okay, so I guess that's that. Thank you so much for joining. And the reason why I went live is because I have a special online meditation class next Wednesday, which is January 31, the end of the month. I haven't had any classes at the start of this year, so this is going to be the first one. Online meditation class, and this class will be all about the power of consistency. Consistency is our word for the year. Um, please join my class, online meditation. Um, on Wednesday at 5 p.m. So this is going to be online via Zoom. If you would like to join, send us a DM at Meditate with Maxine. Um, there will be an energy exchange fee of 555, 555 pesos. Nothing in this world is free. You have to invest in your healing. Please pay your teachers. <laughs> so please, please, Join my meditation, online meditation class, The Power of Consistency, because that is our word for the year, um, consistency. So please join, 5 p.m. Manila time, if you would like to join. Um, send us a DM on Meditate with Maxine. The class is only 555 pesos. You can send it to me through GCash or BPI online. And then, uh, what else? This is just gonna be meditation, no yoga. So, there's gonna be a discussion at the start, medit followed by the meditation proper, and then we will have some questions and answers at the end, and a little bit of journaling as well. So, online meditation, Meditate with Maxine. Our community, Meditate with Maxine community. Um, please, please join. Wednesday, January 31 at 5 p.m. This is going to be my first class for the year. So please join. If you would like to learn more about spirituality, healing, mental health, meditation, yoga, everything, come join my class. Meditate with Maxine. Send me a DM. And again, our vlog, Maxine from Manila. Episode 4, Part 2 is now live on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the very first time I've ever said that. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Maxine from Manila. The link is in my bio. And I'm very proud of our vlogs. Um, my director and I really pour our hearts and souls into this. And I would like to give a special shout out to my director, Jeff Gonzalez. His Instagram is out of scratch. If you would like to check his Instagram, um, he's the one who creates all of my vlogs. 
and he's also my favorite DJ in Manila. So please, please tune in if you would like to help yourself heal, get to know yourself on a deeper level, and just be your own best friend. Come and join our community. Meditate with Maxine. Send us a DM and we will be here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining this live. And I wish you all the best. Please don't stop believing in yourself every day. And don't stop praying to God every day. You are very, very powerful. You just don't know it yet. So come join our classes and I will see you soon next Wednesday. Bye-bye!